we say hello. Also, we would like to acknowledge our graduates and any other people who are in this FB Life who is interested to acquire more knowledge and learning about AMLA and taxation under the local government code. Now that we have hyped up each and every one, and of course, sigaw na sigaw na kayo sa inyong mga relationship status, let us now move on to some peace and quiet as we begin today's program by going back and reaching out to each of our faiths. Let us now have our prayer to be followed by the Lupang Hinira. Alhamdulillah, minas syaitan dan rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Pakala Rabbukum udhani asyablakum amin ya Rabbil alamin. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil alamin. Alrahmanirrahim. Malik ya mizin. Ia kan abdu, ia kan asyhuni nasirat al mustaqim. Nasirat al dzin ala amta alaihim ghair al magdu ya alaihim waladzalin. Amin. Allahumma kwasyamil al muslimin wa kristian walu madhi madin al dabab. وسلم دائما مجتمعنا هذا بسلم والأمن والتقدم في بلدنا هذا آمين يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تزيغ قلوبنا بعد جهل تنوهب لنا من لدن رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا تنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يسيبون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen Our most gracious heavenly Father We come to you today to praise and worship you and give you thanks for all the things you continue to provide for ourselves and our families. Father, we humbly ask for forgiveness for all the times we have offended you. When we forget to acknowledge your presence in the image of our brothers and sisters, and for moments we fail to be good stewards of the blessings you have given us. Continue to guide and protect each one of us, Lord, that we may always walk in the light of your everlasting love and mercy. Grant us, Father, with your comfort in times of distress and with your strength in times of weakness. Bestow upon us your unending grace and healing that we may in turn become instruments of gentleness and compassion to others. We ask all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with a prayer and the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Amen.
Bayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Once again, welcome to the second day lecture of Kina Adman. Of course, guys, we are now almost reaching 700. Please, please, please do not forget to share this FP Live to your friends, tag your friends, and of course, let us interact each with each other in our FB Live. I know that we have been waiting a lot for this discussion, and yes, we have certain speakers with promising features for this afternoon's lecture. Kaya naman, wag na nating patagalin pa ang lecture for this afternoon. Let us now call on Nicole Vince M. Esco, our Educational and Research Standing Committee, to introduce our very first speaker and lecturer for this afternoon. Vince? Thank you, Jane. So yesterday, we had a chance to have Attorney Azores to be with us, who is an outstanding, dynamic, dedicated, hardworking, and passionate woman. But don't you fret, JPNs and future CPAs, for Attorney Azores would still be accompanying us in our lecture today. Here to discuss Anti-Money Laundering Act, let's welcome once again the top-notcher of the 2019 bar examinations, Attorney Maydayan M. Azores, CPA. Good afternoon, Attorney. And good afternoon again, JPNs. Welcome to your second and final day of Kinaadman. So for this afternoon, we will discuss AMLA. So itong AMLA na to, kaka-amend lang. And yung amendment was signed January 29 and then was published in the official gazette January 30. So ayan, mainit-init pa talaga yung amendment and... Kaya i-update ko kayo ngayon today, talagang days before the introduction of these amendments. And for, of course, for those who will take the CPA board exams, yan, very important talaga to. Okay? Sige. So, yan. Can I share my screen? Okay. Sige. And today is the last day of, ano pala, no? Today is the last day of January. And February na tomorrow. Kaya pala sobrang lamig na. Kasi magba-Valentine's na, no? Yan. Kaya madaming anay na eh. Madaming marupok ngayon kasi mag-February na. Nagahanap ng ano, date sa Valentine's. Baka, baka naman makahabol, di ba? Yung mga ganyan. Pero kung hindi man magkaroon ng date sa Valentine's or hindi man magka-jowa within the year, at least magiging CPA. Di ba? After na lang ng pagiging CPA, saka na yung jowa. Okay? Claim it. Sige, lisensya muna bago jowa. Okay, perfect. Sige. So, ayan, let's start. So, ayan. Like what I said, hindi ko pa pala na-amend itong heading ko, but it was amended and I will show it to you later. So, we will discuss Anti-Money Laundering Act. So, ang original niyang batas ay RA 9160 and 2001 pa siya naging applicable. Okay. So, before we proceed with the provisions of the law itself, I want to ano muna, to give you a background or parang overview 
no word na money laundering baka kasi may mga iba sa inyo especially yung uh, lower levels pa na accountant si kumain nuno dito hindi pa na encounter itong term na to so ayan money laundering di ba parang sa word pa lang meron ka na makukuha na pwedeng na pwedeng pagkuhanan ng nini so yung word na launder okay so yung word daw na to nag-originate daw with the Italian mafia I don't know if you know him, si Al Capone. Hindi yung yung donut sa Jayco ha. Si Al Capone, Italian mafia siya na ang business nila is yung prostitution, ganyan, mga liquor sales, ganyan. And syempre, since itong mga transactions na to, paid siya by cash. So, syempre, pag ang dami nilang hawak na cash, syempre, delikado rin sa buhay. Tsaka baka maging, ano rin, ma-question sila ng authorities. So ang ginawa nila ni Al Capone, itong yung income dito sa sa illegal transactions nila. Nilagay nila sa isang legitimate na negosyo. So that was a laundry shop. Kaya that's what that was the term money laundering. Ganyan. And it's also very fit kasi ang meaning talaga ng money laundering in simpler words these are activities intended to disguise the origins of the proceeds of the crime through processes that transform illegal inputs into apparently legitimate sources. Ibig sabihin nun, yung maduming pera, hinugasan mo, pinamukha mong malinis. Okay? So galing siya sa maduming pera, maduming transaction, then nilinis mo, parang nilabahan mo yung pera, ayan. and then pinagmukha mong galing sa malinis na transaction. So yun yung money laundering in a nutshell. Okay? Sige. So, proceed tayo naman dun sa provisions mismo ng AMLA. Okay? AMLA na lang tawag natin dun sa anti-money laundering law. Okay? So, ang purpose ng AMLA daw is to protect and preserve the integrity and confidentiality of bank accounts and to ensure that the Philippines shall not be used as a money laundering site for the proceeds of any unlawful activity. Diba? Andyan yung bank accounts integrity and confidentiality of bank accounts kaya sabi ko di ba related yung banking laws sa AMLA ayan so yun ang purpose rin ng money laundering law okay para hindi tayo maging ano maging safe haven for money launderers okay so ito naman yung technical na definition sa batas okay sa RA 9160 as amended okay ito. yung mnemonic ko hindi ko kayo minumura Okay, baka pinumura kami na attorney deal. Okay, para lang yan mas maintindihan nyo, ha? So, that's P-U-T-A-C-A, okay? Para mas maintindihan nyo, okay? So, bago natin enumerate yung mga specifics talaga, unang-una daw, money laundering is committed by any person who knowing. So, ayan, nakabold yung knowing, ha? Dapat may knowledge, okay? May knowledge yung magkocommit ng crime na to. Hindi pwedeng, hindi siya aware na nagtatransact siya with a monetary instrument or property na involved pala sa money laundering. So ayan, very important, knowing that any monetary instrument or property represents, involves, or relates to the proceeds of any unlawful activity. Okay, and then the law proceeds to enumerate different ways to commit money laundering. So ito yung mnemonics natin, okay? So, hindi siya pasunod-sunod, but you know, when you create mnemonics kasi, I suggest na syempre yung maaalala nyo. And I don't think makakalimutan yung mnemonics na to kasi syempre pag nairita ka sa tao. Diba? Or minsan nga nagiging parang expression na yun sa mga kaibigan. Okay, hindi niya makakalimutan. Okay, sige. Simulan natin tuloy sa P. Okay. Ayaw natin simulan sa P kasi nagre-relate pala siya sa, ano, sa previous letters. Okay. So, yung una-una, ito ano kasi ito eh, um, pinresent ko siya as the way presented ng batas. Pero yung mnemonics na ginawa ko, medyo jumbled para lang nga mabilis niyong maalala. Okay? So, yung una, yung letter T dyan is pag nag-transact ka daw ng monetary instrument na yun or property na involved dun sa unlawful activity. So, money launder ka na nun. Next one is if you convert, transfer, dispose, moves, acquire, possesses, or use. So, ang dami na naman. So, ang mnemonics na naman natin dyan ay UPMDCAT. Okay. So, yung pusa sa UP Medicine. Yeah, pwede natin mnemonics yan. So, madami. Medyo madami. So, if you commit any of these acts, you are also a money launderer. 
Then next, if you conceal or disguise the true nature, source, location, disposition, movement, or ownership. Yan. Tinago mo yung talagang pinagmulan no? Nag-disguise ka. Yan. You are also committing money laundering. Next, if you attempt, kahit attempt lang, or conspire, di ba? To commit money laundering offenses referred in ABC, yung mga enumerate natin. So kahit attempt pa lang, pwede ka nang parusahan ng batas na to or nag-conspire ka. Ang ibig sabihin ng conspire when two or more people agree to perform a specific act and proceeds to commit it. Okay? So, ang bawa na ganap, conspire tayo. No, ah, itago natin yung ano. Talagang minakaw natin, paglabasin natin galing sa legal na, legal na source. So, yan. You are also committing money laundering. Okay? And aside from that, kahit tumulong ka lang daw, you aided, you abet, you assist, or counsels the commission of the money laundering, punishable ka rin sa batas na to. So, kahit tumulong ka lang, hindi ka naman talaga doon sa mga original, original na nagplano ng money laundering, pero tumulong ka, you are also committing money laundering. And then sa letter F, if you perform or fails to perform any act as a result of which you facilitates the offense of money laundering. So halimbawa, um, officer ka or employee ka sa bangko and then meron na, meron na, ang tawag dito, meron protocol na pinoprovide ang bank in order to confirm or in order to verify the identity of an account holder or kung halimbawa meron talagang sinusunod na process ang bangko para ma-make sure na talagang legitimate yung deposit or whatsoever. And hindi mo sinunod yon Hindi ka hindi mo yon finalo. And then as a result of that, nagkaroon ng money laundering, then you are also liable. So parang merong negligence. Okay? Sige. So, ayan, in-enumerate na natin. Kaya ang mnemonics natin ay, ayan, hindi ko nasasabihin at baka mamaya sabihin nyo may numero ka pati yun. Okay, sige. So, aside from that daw, ang money laundering rin daw ay committed by any covered person. Didiscuss natin ko ano bang meaning ng ano bang covered person na yan. Who, knowing, ayan, knowing rin, so importante ang knowledge, that a covered or suspicious transaction, yung terms na yun, didiscuss rin natin, is required under this act to be reported. Ayan, ito, naman, ito naman yung reporting requirement. Tapos, hindi niya ni-report. So, kahit hindi ka pala nag-report, you are already committing money laundering. So, hindi sa lahat ng bagay na pag hindi, ka, hindi mo ginawa yung trabaho mo, okay lang. Parang galit lang sa boss. So, pag sa ganito, pag involved ka sa mga transaction na possible na maging, uh, maging money laundering, then, ayan, you are exposing yourself to a criminal liability. Okay? Yan. So, these are the ways how to commit money laundering. So, di ba, dito, sabi natin, knowing that any monetary instrument, ano ba yung monetary instrument na yan? Okay. So, sabi ta, sa batas, ang monetary instrument daw ay yan, pera, coins or currency of legal tender of the Philippines, kahit mga foreign currency of the Philippines or any other country, kasama yan. Drafts, checks and notes, kasama rin. Ayan, yung mga negotiable instruments nyo, securities, bonds, commercial papers, ayan. And the, the law proceeds to enumerate different um, financial documents that are of the similar, similar nature. Ayan. So kasama rin daw siya sa word na monetary instrument. So wag nyo isipin na pag porke nakalagay monetary instrument, pera lang. Okay, so included rin yan. Kasama rin ang contracts or policies of insurance, life or non-life, and contracts of suretyship, and other similar instruments were titled there to passes to another by endorsement, assignment, or delivery. So, ayan. So, pwede kasi, halimbawa, may lumabas sa board exams nyo or sa exams nyo, which of the following is a monetary instrument? Or the following are monetary instruments under the AMLA exec? Ayan. So, familiarize nyo yung sarili nyo dito sa enumeration ng monetary instrument under the AMLA. Okay. Right. So, ayan. Okay na tayo dun sa isang part, di ba, ng definition. Monetary instrument. Monetary instrument. Now, proceed naman tayo dito. Ano ba? Ayan, syempre, sana magaling ako mag-drawing. <laughs> ayan. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin itong unlawful activity? Okay. Kahit ano ba? Basta ano lang? Basta punishable ng batas? Ano na ba yan? Pwede ka na mag-commit ng money laundering? Hindi because, 
para sa ano. Dahil meron mismo na in-enumerate ang batas as amended na mga tinatawag nating unlawful activities. And madami-dami siya. Sa original na AMLA, 14 lang siya. Ngayon, sobrang dami na. Okay? And in-amend pa, may dinagdag na naman. So I think more than 30 na ata. So ayan. So yan na 1 to 14, yan yung original. Okay? Sige. So, hindi na natin i-discuss isa't isa, pero gusto ko lang mag-raise ang attention nyo dito sa iba. Like, this one, sa so number one, kidnapping for ransom. Okay, so important na for ransom. Baka kasi kidnapping lang. Okay? Hindi naman kasi lahat ng cases ng kidnapping na papanood nyo sa pelikula na like nangininingil ng pera, ganyan, whatsoever. Pwede rin namang na kidnapping lang and walang money involved. Okay? So, pag sinabi natin ransom, this is, uh, uh, it may be in the form of money or any property of value that is given to the kidnappers for the release of the person kidnapped, for the liberty of the person that was detained. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng ransom. Okay? So, importante na kidnapping for ransom mismo. Hindi pwedeng kidnapping lang. Okay? So, ayan rin yung drug offenses, graft and corrupt practices, plunder, ayan, ang dami. Kasama rin dyan yung mga special laws, yung e-commerce violations, securities fraud, ganyan. And ito, ito rin, hindi lang dapat, sana yan, hindi lang dapat theft, dapat, ay, wait lang, where is it? Dapat qualified theft. Ano yung sabihin ng qualified theft? So ito, kinukommit naman to kapag nasa position of position with trust and confidence yung nagnakaw. Okay? So hindi lang yung basta-basta ang stranger tapos nagnakaw. So pati namin mong qualified theft, pinagkatiwala sa iyo, the person who entrust to you the property have confidence in you. Hindi naman yung sabihin na talaga, tiwala-tiwala ako. So, I mean, you are in a position, halimbawa, bank teller ka, Ganyan, bank teller ka, di ba? So, ang banko naman, binibigay sa'yo ang pera for safekeeping and part talaga yun ang job mo. And then, uh, ninakaw mo, ganyan. So, since uh, you are holding a position in trust and confidence, you're committing qualified theft. Yan. Okay? So, hindi lang yung simpleng theft. Dapat qualified theft. Okay? Sige. So, other unlawful activities. Ayan. Ang dami, di ba? Okay. Hindi ko nga maintindihan yung iba dito kung paano ka makakakumit ng money laundering. Like, caves protection law. May ninakaw ka sa kweba. Ganyan. <laughs> so, ayan. Hindi ko rin mag-gets. Itong fencing, yan yung bumili ka ng mga nakaw na bagay. Whether you know it or not, you are already committing fencing. Ayan. Uh, may terrorism and dyan rin. Intellectual property law violations, voyeurism, yung photo and video, yan yung nangyayari if you secretly record uh, a person in uh, with his or her private parts exposed without his or her knowledge or consent and then committed rin yan if you distribute it without knowledge or without consent. Ayan. So yan yung voyeurism. Okay. Ang dami. So, proceed tayo ngayon dun sa covered persons. Di ba na-mention natin itong covered persons. Ano naman daw pag sinabing covered persons? Hindi naman literal na ano, natatakpan, ganyan. Covered as in part sila ng coverage ng batas. Okay? So, itong mga covered persons, which we will enumerate later on, Kaya important na malaman kasi meron silang very important role to play in order for the Anti-Money Laundering Act to work. So, kailangan nilang mag-report sa Anti-Money Laundering Council ng lahat ng covered and suspicious transactions within five working days from occurrence thereof. Okay? So, tatanong naman kayo, okay, ah, okay, ang covered persons pala kailangan mag-report. Ano naman yung covered and suspicious transactions? So, mamaya, i-discuss rin natin yan. Okay, so, inote nyo lang yung mga, yung mga phrases na hindi pa natin na-touch on and then balikan natin mamaya. Okay, so as, as an introduction rin, dito sa covered persons, so madami yan. And di ba, kailangan sila mag-report 
na mga covered suspicious transactions. Exempted dito ang mga lawyers and accountants acting as independent legal professionals na nakakuha ng information as a result of their profession. Ano ba talaga ang personal ano ka personal lawyer, personal CPA, personal accountant ganyan. And then as a result of your function you happen to you happen to um, inquire into a suspicious or covered transaction and then that relevant information is not necessary to be reported to the AMLC kasi exempted yun eh kasi meron na privilege between you and the client. Okay, yan yung tinatawag natin professional secrecy. Okay, so kung acting ka as a lawyer for a client and or an accountant, yun, exempted ka. Pero hindi ibig sabihin na porke lawyer ka, kasi nag-work ka sa banko, pero hindi ka naman talaga, wala namang client or lawyer-client relationship between you and the customer. Sabihin mo, oh, exempted ako kasi lawyer ako. Hindi. It's not because of the title. It's because of the function you are performing for the other person. Okay? So, yeah. So ayan. So di ba may may ay may requirement to report doon sa covered persons. Paano naman? Syempre, nagre-report eh, ang lalaking transaction yan and for sure ang mga involved na tao diyan hindi basta-basta. Okay, so syempre, kung ikaw hala magre-report ako si ganito nag-deposit ng ganitong sobrang laki, baka mamaya kaswan ako nito pag nagre-report ako diyan. So ang sabi ng batas, o oh, sige, huwag kayong matakot. Relax lang kayo mga covered persons because meron tayong tinatawag na safe harbor provision. Okay? Ano ba tong safe harbor provision? So wala daw administrative, criminal, or civil proceedings na pwedeng ikaso dun sa mga tao or sa covered persons na nag-file lang naman ng covered or suspicious report. Okay? In the regular performance of his duties in good faith. Okay, so kahit mag-result yun into criminal prosecution, pag ginawa niya lang naman yung trabaho niya, hindi mo siya pwedeng kasuhan. Okay? Sige, eh trabaho lang naman ko. Ayan. And talagang kailangan siya ng batas mag-record. So wala kayong magagawa dyan. Hindi nyo sila pwedeng basta-basta lang kasuhan kasi naiskandalo kayo or whatsoever. Okay? So yan ang tinatawag natin safe harbor provision. Okay? So, ayan na. Sino-sino ba ang mga covered persons na may na may responsibility to report to the AMLC the covered and suspicious transactions. Okay. So covered persons daw are natural or juridical persons which refer to yan, medyo madami no. But you know, I'd like to summarize this sa mga itong banks, nan banks etc. Sa so first part, ito yung mga agencies or companies or organizations that are supervised and regulated by the PSP. Ayan, di ba? Yun ang common denominator naman nila, ibangs, nambangs, ganyan. Basta supervised and regulated ng PSP. Yung sa second naman, insurance companies, pre-need companies. Ito naman, supervised and regulated by the Insurance Commission. So kung mag-memorize kayo, pwede siguro... Ah, okay, number one, supervised regulated by the PSP. So, may isip na kayo, okay, syempre, pasok ko dyan ang banks, kasay banks, ganyan, forex dealers, pawn shops, ganyan. So, para mas mabilis, kaysa i-memorize nyo ito isa-isa. So, automatic naman mag-aan na sa brain nyo na, ah, pag-regulated kasi bin ang BSP. So, dapat mga ano yan, mga financial organizations. Okay. So, sa next part naman, regulated ng insurance commission. So, dapat uh, yung mga insurance companies. So, sa third naman, ang common denominator nila, supervised or regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay. So, okay naman dito, yung mga involved sa investment contracts like securities dealers, brokers, salesmen, investment houses, pati yung mga involved sa mutual funds, ganyan. So, madaming enumeration. Pero ang common denominator nila, supervised or regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay. Sige, so first three pa lang yan. Hindi ba dami-dami pa? Ayan. So number four on the list are jewelry dealers, dealers, jewelry dealers in precious metals who as a business trade in precious metals for transactions in excess of 1 million pesos. Ayan. And yung next, medyo related naman kasi in precious stones naman. So, para mas mabilis ang pag-memorize, jewelry de dealers in precious metals and stones kapag ang transaction ay in excess of 1 million. Okay. Precious metals and stones. 
to be honest, hindi ko alam kung ano yung mga example ng precious metals. Siguro precious stones, mga diamond, ganyan. Precious metals. Um, I'm not sure. Comment down below so you can educate me. Yeah, sige. And then number six, these are company service providers. Okay. So, ang mga function naman daw nito, pwedeng formation agent, yung ibig sabihin ng formation agent, like tutulungan mo ang group of persons to incorporate, para mag-incorporation sila. Ayan. They also include those who act as director, corporate secretary, ganyan, partners of a partnership, ganyan. Basta related in the conduct of a business. Ayan. And then, next on the list, Ito, mga service providers rin, pero ang involved, mga securities. So, kapag ano ka daw, involved ka sa managing ng client money, yan yung mga tinatawag natin mga fund managers, yung mga ganyan. securities or other assets, and then management of banks, savings or securities accounts, pati yung management ng companies, yan. Covered person ka rin. Okay. So, ito yung sinasabi ko. Notwithstanding the foregoing, the term covered person shall exclude lawyers and accountants acting as independent legal professionals in relation to information concerning their clients or where disclosure of information would compromise client confidence or the attorney-client relationship. Okay? Provided na syempre dapat ano ka dito, lisensyado ka sa Pilipinas. Okay? Okay. Hindi pa nagtatapos dyan, syempre. Anjan ang in-include rin noong 2017 ang mga casinos including internet and ship-based casinos with respect to their casino cash transactions related to their gaming operation. So originally hindi to kasama itong mga to, itong casinos. Um, nung binasa ko yung ano, yung reason before kung bakit hindi siya kasama. Kasi daw baka mas masyado maging hassle. Originally para may merong merong lawmaker na nagsabi, isama natin ang casinos kasi ang daming perang involved diyan. Para may kumontra na lawmaker kasi sabi, para masyado magiging hassle yan for casinos kasi nga uh, grabe ang inflow and outflow ng pera and mahirap rin i-trace din. So as a result, madaming nag-agree sa kanya so hindi nga in-include. Hindi in-include sa batas. And because of that, because of that um, confidence that uh, there is no necessity to include casinos. Kaya nangyari to. If you can remember or baka nanood kayo ng news noong 2016, ito yung Bangladesh Bank Heist. So, sobra, sobrang laking controversy nito sa Pilipinas na talagang na, nalagay sa, sa spotlight ang ating financial system. Okay, ano bang nangyari dito? So, para lang, para lang alam nyo. Okay, sige. So dito, ito yung, I think this is the biggest money laundering scandal to hit the Philippines. Kasi ang involved ba naman ay 81 million dollars. So convert mo yan sa peso. Sobrang laki niya. Okay. So ang nangyari dito, ito, yung pera from the Federal Reserve of New York na 81 million dollars napunta sa Philippines or sa RCBC Philippines sometime in February 20 February 4 to 5 2016 okay so winire siya parang ang unatang pinalusutan muna ay itong tatlo na nasa US pa rin and then eventually na wire sa RCBC Philippines yeah tapos Nung napunta na sa RCBC Philippines, ni-register or dinivide yung 81 million dollars into four fictitious identities. So si Michelle Cruz may 6 million dollars, si Jesse Christopher Lagrosas 30 million dollars, Alfred Vergara 20 million dollars and Enrico, Enrico, Enrico Vasquez 25 million dollars. So pang-Pilipino yung name no. So parang pinangalan nila sa apat na Pinoy ko, no? Pero ano naman siya? Uh, fictitious talaga. Okay? So, itong mga accounts na to, untouched siya until February 4, 2016. Okay? Existing na siya, pero 
nagkaroon lang siya ng transaction nung winire nga yung RCBC. So, may isip mo, ah, baka planado talaga. No? So, ayan yung nangyari. So, since naka-dollar siya, ang ginawa naman, kinonvert nila itong dollars into peso dito sa Philrem Service Corp. Yan, kinonvert nila into Philippine peso and then kinonsolidate nila sa account ng isang Chinese-Filipino businessman in the name of William Sogo. Sogo. William Sogo. So, ayan. Nung makonsolidate na sa pangalan ni William Sogo, binigay naman yung pera ngayon sa two big-time casino junket operators, namely Wei Kang Su and Kim Wong. Okay? Ito lang ata kasi yung na-recover yung $63 million and then yung iba, hindi pa nahan. So itong $63 million, ito yung napunta kay Kim Wong. Okay? So itong napunta kay Kim Wong, minove naman yung proceeds sa different casino high rollers through Midas, andyan yung Soler, andyan rin yung City of Dreams Casino. Okay? So yun na. Doon na nalaman yung kung ano nga nangyari. And because of this, ang kinasuhan ay si Maya Santos de Guito, yung manager ng RCBC Jupiter. And sinasabi, allegedly, that she processed and facilitated the movement of the funds. And sabi daw, nagkulud daw siya with the mastermind of the entire money laundering operations. So ayan, I think she was held guilty by the regional trial court and then inappeal nila. So ayan, sobrang laking pera kasi niyan in the kung makikita nyo parang ang dali nila na transfer or na wire yung pera sa Philippine account dito sa RCBC. So, ayan. Kaya after nyan, syempre, hindi na wala ng choice ang ating Congress but to include casinos in the covered persons. Kaya ayan ngayon, covered na ang casinos. Okay? Okay. So, yun ang covered persons for you. So, balikan natin, di ba? Hindi pa natin na-define ano ba ang covered transaction. So, ang covered transaction naman, these are transactions in cash or other equivalent monetary instrument involving a total amount in excess of 500,000 within one banking day. So, ayan. Ito naman ang inyong magic number. 500,000. Parang same sa PDIC. No? So, 500,000 within one banking day. So, within the day, meron kang transaction na 500K. Okay. Whether deposit, whether withdrawal, ganyan. So, yan. 500,000. Tapos sasabihin, eh so casino, parang ano lang yan, wala lang yan eh. Kaya naman, naisip nila, sa casino daw, dapat at least 5 million pesos. Ayan. Para hindi naman masyadong hassle doon sa casino operators. Kasi baka mamaya, although I don't know talaga kung ilan ang, ilan ang or ano ang kalakaran sa casinos, ilan ang usual na average amount for a certain game, ganyan. But they deemed it proper na in excess of 5 million na lang yung kailangan i-report na covered transaction. So ito ang covered transaction. So pag covered transaction, ang importante lang diyan yung amount. Okay? So generally 500k within one banking day except pag casino 5m. Okay? Sige. So na define na natin ang covered transaction, 'di ba? Yung isa naman ay suspicious transaction. Okay. So ayan, ang suspicious transaction. So ito ang ating mnemonics. So wag green minded yan lang ang ating mnemonics para mabilis niyong matandaan. Di ba napaka wholesome ng ating mga mnemonics for today? But you know, it will help you remember and kahit ganyan, medyo ano, at least pagdating niyo doon sa board exam, maaalala niyo kasi ang bilis niyo yan matatandaan for sure. So ito ang ating mnemonics, susudik. Okay? So ang suspicious transaction naman, A transaction with a covered institution regardless of the amount involved. Diba? Compare mo dun sa covered transaction, ang pinag-uusapan natin ay amount. Diba? Yung 500k or 5 million in case of casinos. Dito man, regardless of the amount involved. Okay? Where any of the following circumstances exist. Okay? So kahit ilan daw na pera pa yan na involved, pero kaduda-duda. Okay? Suspicious siya. Okay? So first on the list, wala daw underlying legal or trade obligation, purpose, or economic justification. So yung transaction na yon hindi malaman kung ano ba ang pinagmulan or kung ano ang source ng transaction. 
di ba? So, pwedeng, ah, kaduda-duda to. Ano, bigla na lang may pumasok na ganito. Eh, wala namang siyang usual na transaction na ganito or uh, parang hindi naman siya involved sa ganitong klaseng amount. Kanya. So, walang underlying obligation, purpose, or economic justification. Okay, number two, hindi properly identified yung client. Okay. So, pwedeng hindi nalagay yung tunay na identity or halimbawa naka-register I don't think naman it's possible naka-register yung naka-register yung account kay Daphne Bridgerton yung mga ganyan. so hindi properly identified alam mong fictitious yung account Ayan. and the number three amount involved is not commensurate with clients business or financial capacity so for example uh, isa kang uh, not to degrade naman the professional no? uh, isa kang halimbawa janitor and ang usual na transaction mo is yung salaries mo lang na pumapasok every month. Tapos biglang, on February 2021, biglang may pumasok na 1 million. Or sabihin natin halimbawa, may biglang pumasok na 300,000 or below 500,000 naman yun, di ba? Biglang may pumasok na 300,000. Na parang, oh, hindi naman commensurate to sa ano niya. Hindi commensurate dun sa financial capacity niya. And historically, parang ganito lang naman yung ganito naman talaga yung na-earn niya. So, ayan. Pwedeng suspi ma maging suspicious transaction siya. And even though below 500K, kailangan mag-report yan ng covered person. Okay? Ito naman, number four, transaction structured in order to avoid being subject of reportorial, reportorial requirements. So, an example niya. So, di ba ang threshold amount natin 500k? So, itong si depositor, akala niya matalino siya. So, para matago yung pera, ang dinedeposit niya everyday, 499,999.99. O, hindi naman yun about, di ba, sa 500,000. So, everyday, ganun yung dinedeposit niya. So, syempre, mahahite na si banko na, ha? Huh? Bakit ganun yung dinedeposit niya? So, halatang iniiwasan yung reportorial, reportorial requirement. Okay? Ito naman. Um, sa number five, almost parang similar sa number three. So, the transaction that deviates from client's profile and or client's past transaction with covered institutions. So, ayun nga, for example, ang, ang laman lang naman ng, uh, ng savings account mo usually is 500. Ganyan, tapos every month 500 lang ang dinideposit. Tapos biglang, the next month biglang may 200,000. Ganyan, so the next month may 200,000 ulit. Another month, 200,000. Ayan. So, nag-deviate na sa past transaction mo. And then, magtataka na rin yung banko. Bakit kaya bigla siyang may pa 200K? Yeah. Yeah. So, pwede yan po asa sa suspicious transaction na i-report. Re. Okay. And sa so number six, transaction related to an unlawful activity, including those committed or about to be committed. Okay. So, yung mga in-enumerate natin na unlawful activities. Okay. So, i-report rin yan ng mga covered persons. Halimbawa, um, talagang na-involve yung bank teller sa qualified theft. Yeah. So, dineposit niya sa account niya. <laughs> Ayan. So, i-report pa rin yan sa AMLC. And other similar or analogous transactions. So, yeah. That's the suspicious transactions for you. So, again, ang ating, inyo, ang ating mnemonics ay susudik. Okay. Sana hindi nyo makalimutan. Okay. Sige. So aside from the reporting requirement, sabi ng batas, hindi naman ata enough na ang gagawin lang natin para ma-prevent yung money laundering is yung pa-report-report -report lang. Siyempre dapat, ano, meron na tayong preventive measures aside from that. We should uh, perform actions before the act. So ito yung mga sinasabi ng batas na pwedeng maging preventive measure para, para nga naman ma-prevent ma na or ma-hamper na yung uh, attempted na money laundering. So first, customer identification. Okay. So ang covered institutions daw required na establish and record yung true identity ng mga kliyente based sa official documents. Dapat may sistema sila of verifying the true identity of their clients. And in case of corporate clients, require a system of verifying their legal existence and organizational structure as well as the authority and identification of all persons purporting to act on their behalf. Kaya di ba, pag nag-open kayo ng bank account, syempre hingan kayo ng ID, ganyan, and dapat original, pe-present mo, tapos yung photocopy lang nila, tapos may signature pa, ganyan. Part yan, syempre, ng protocol nila. 
para ma-verify na talagang ikaw. Kahit nga di ba sa GCash, uh, para ma-verify ka talagang owner, parang kailangan mag-selfie ka. Ganyan. Para ma-check talaga na ikaw yung account holder. Okay. For trustee naman, nominee and agency accounts, kailangan rin i-verify and record yung true and full identity of the person on whose behalf a transaction is being conducted. So as you can remember sa discussion natin yesterday, ang mga trustee accounts or itong nominee and agency accounts, parang same nature sila na ang pangalan ng account is with another person but the beneficial ownership pertains to another. Okay? So, ayan. So, kailangan pa rin daw i-verify yung true and full identity ng person kung para kanino yung transaction. Okay. So, for juridical entities, para sa mga corporation, partnership, meron na special requirement. Kasi, syempre, ang identity na ba, di ba, ng, as you learned in your corporation and as in your partnership, ang identity naman nila artificial lang. I mean, it's just vested by the law in order for them to to enter into contracts and to process transactions. Pero ano naman talaga yun? Parang um, that's just a uh, uh, a legal concept that was created in order nga for to give the corporation the leeway to to process transactions and to incur obligations by itself. Okay. So since ang katransak ng bangko is hindi naman talaga totoong tao, I mean, they are a group of person. It's just an artificial entity. May requirement rin ang AMLA para naman ma-make sure talaga na yung register na korporasyon or yung corporate bank account ay legitimate. Okay. So kailangan nilang hingin syempre yung articles, kailangan nilang hingin yung bylaws, yung address, yung lista ng directors or partners, stockholders, owning at least 2% of the capital stock and the contact numbers. Okay? And aside from that, kailangan rin i-disclose ang beneficial owners, if any. And kailangan rin i-verify yung nag-act or yung parang representative ng corporation. Okay? And aside from that, also, kailangan rin i-make sure na yung juridical entity na yon, it's not in the process of being dissolved. Baka kasi i-dissolve na or uh, i-avoid na yung, ano niya, yung lisensya niya to operate as a corporation, or hindi na siya nag operate at all, or it's in the process of being shut down, phased out, or terminated. Okay? So, as legal entities, uh, the covered persons must conduct their transactions with them with extreme caution. Okay? Kaya may special requirement ang batas for juridical entities. Okay. So yan ang requirement for customer identification. So simula pa lang, dapat daw kilala na yung identity ng tao. Ayan. So parang sa ano lang yan? Parang sa relasyon. Di ba? So pa, bago kayo pumasok sa relationship, dapat i-verify nyo muna yung talagang identity. Baka mamaya kasi ang kausap niyo sa chat ay hindi naman siya baka poser lang kumuha ng picture ganyan and aside from that you verify first the intentions yan yan ang very important para hindi kayo masaktan <laughs> nagdeviate na tayo sa transaction so para matandaan niyo na kailangan rin muna i-identify talaga and i-verify ang identity o pagkatao ng mga customers okay so ayan total magba-Valentine's na rin. That's just a relationship advice. So, bago ma-fall, kailangan muna i-verify ang identity at intentions ng manliligaw or kahit, alam ba, wala laki kayo, i-verify nyo rin muna ang feelings nyo. Kasi hindi pwed pwedeng liligawan nyo or lalandiin nyo and then in the end, iiwan nyo kasi hindi pala kayo masyado na-fall or hindi nyo pala siya masyado type. Okay, so wag paasa boys. Okay, sige. Alright, so let's proceed. Commercial lang yan. Okay, sige. So another preventive measure is record keeping. So ang mga covered institutions daw, kailangan nilang i-maintain or restore yung records for five years from the dates of transactions. So, andyan yung mga ID or kung ano mang pinapirmahan sa'yo, application form, whatsoever, kailangan nilang i-keep yan for five years. 
for closed accounts naman, kahit closed accounts na kailangan pa rin nila yung i-maintain from the dates when they were closed, also for five years. Okay? Kapag may na-file na money laundering case against the person holding the account, kailangan mo rin i-retain ang records until resolved or terminated ng korte yung kaso. Okay? So, ayan. So, meron na rin record-keeping requirement from covered institutions. Okay. So, tatlo na. Na covered institution, mag-report, i-verify ang identity ng customer, and mag-record-keeping. Okay. And aside from that, meron rin binibigay na prohibition against certain accounts. Hindi lahat pwedeng uh, i-open or hindi lahat pwedeng mag-open ng bank account sa kukani-kaninong pangalan or identity. Okay? So sabi ng batas, kailangan daw only in the true and full name of the account owner or holder. Okay? So hindi pwede yung ano lang, yung alias or like fictitious, like gusto mo ang bank account mo nakapangalan kay Ariana Grande. Yan, hindi pwede yan. Parang iano mo na lang na ano aka Ariana Grande hindi pa dagan dapat true and full name mo okay hindi pa rin yung mga anonymous account yan nga yung mga fictitious account absolutely prohibited yan hindi pa ding ano uh, mag-open ka ng account alias Lupin medyo <laughs> hindi pa rin ganun okay dapat true and full name mo and ito dapat daw face to face ang pag-open ng account pero ito kasi ano pa to eh pre-pandemic. Ngayon naman nag-adapt yung mga bangko and I think the BSP agreed, it, agreed with it. And I also encountered firsthand where I was able to open an account na ano lang, nag-video call lang kami nung bank manager. Na parang, ah, pa-video ko lang po para ma-verify na ikaw talaga ito. So wala nang face-to-face kasi nga syempre, di ba, iniiwasan natin niya as much as possible. So yun. So nakapag-open ng account, pwede naman yun kasi talaga na-verify naman na ako yung nasa So, nasa other line. And ako talaga nag-open ng account. Ayan. So, yon But, uh, generally, kung wala na pandemic, uh, ang requirement ay face-to-face -face contact. And full compliance with the minimum documentary requirements for individual customers. So, itong mga documentary requirements, usually nga, yung para ma-verify yung, yung identity ng customer. Okay. Ito naman, um, pwede ka mag-open ng numbered account. As long as hindi siya checking account. Number account, like number lang talaga yung account, name. However, kailangan pa rin ma-establish yung true identity ng customers ng peso and foreign currency ng checking number accounts. So pwede yung number accounts, pero kailangan pa rin ma-verify yung identity. Okay? So, In other words, bottom line, kailangan lang nakapangalan sa identity mismo ng tao para nga ma-prevent yung case na inu-open sa fictitious na account para syempre hindi ma-trace sa'yo. Di ba? Yung case dati ni Estrada na pinangalan sa isang fictitious name para hindi ma-trace sa kanya. So yun yung rin yung iniiwasan dan syempre. Kasi money laundering na yun, involved sa corruption tapos para paglabasing hindi sa kanya or malinis, pinangalan sa ibang account, tapos fictitious naman yung name. So ito, pinoprohibit absolutely yung mga ganyan, yung mga anonymous, yung mga under fictitious name na account. Okay? Alright. So those are the preventive measures under the AMLA. Okay. So syempre, dito naman sa AMLA, kinreate ang Anti-Money Laundering Council. Okay. Ang Anti-Money Laundering Council, composed yan ng governor ng BSP as chairman, commissioner of the Insurance Commission, and the chairman of the SEC as member. So tatlo, governor ng BSP as chairman, then yung Insurance Commission, tsaka SEC as members. Di ba? Bakit silang tatlo? Eh kasi di ba, kung maalala nyo, doon sa ano natin, enumeration ng covered persons, yung first three, yung mga supervised and regulated ng BSP, ng SEC, ng Insurance Commission. So sila rin yung Anti-Money Laundering Council. Okay. So as a group, pwede silang mag-investigate, mag-forfeit, or mag-file ng complaint. Pero hindi discuss natin in detail yung kanilang powers. Okay. So first, ito, di ba, na-mention ko na kahapon, 
uh, as an exception to the bank secrecy law, the AMLC can inquire into deposits or investments. So, kailan daw? Upon order of any competent court based on an ex parte application. Ano ibig sabihin ng competent court? Ang competent court dyan ay court of appeals. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin ng ex parte application? Uh, hindi na siya litigus. Like, hindi na pag-aawayan or pwedeng yung sole party lang pumunta sa korte o oh, ito po mag apply kami. Hindi na kailangan pasagutin yung kabila. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin niya? In cases of violations of this act. Okay? So, related sa money laundering. In case na establish daw na may probable cause na related sa unlawful activity or money laundering offense yung account. Okay, so pwede nilang tingnan okay, as we discussed yesterday. And another instance is another uh, exception we discussed yesterday is yung under anti-terror law. Okay, so yung related daw sa financing of terrorism, yung nag-commit ng terrorism under the ATL, tapos yung mga... Uh, pwede ano nga lang tayo, parang suspected terrorist because there is probable cause to believe that they are committing or attempting to commit or facilitate in the financing of terrorism. So yan. So pwede silang mag-inquire sa deposits or investments. Okay? So yan. Related yan doon sa bank secrecy law na diniscuss natin yesterday. Okay? So di ba? Dito, sa first part, kailangan ng order ng competent court. Okay. May instances ba na hindi na kailangan? Of course, there is. Kasi kung wala, wala akong ganun na segue. Okay. So may mga instances na hindi na kailangan yung court order. So these are the following. Number one, in case ng unlawful activity involved ay kidnapping for ransom. Number two, drug offenses. Number three, hijacking, destructive arson, and murder, including yung mga perpetrated by terrorists. Similar foreign offenses. And lastly, di ba, yung diniscuss natin kanina, yung sa anti-terror law, walang na-mention na kailangan mag-apply ka pa sa court. Okay, so yun yung mga instances na hindi na kailangan ng court order. The AML is... AMLC, upon its own initiative, sila lang pwede na mag-inquire diretso na sa bank deposits. Okay? So, ito yung instances. Okay? Another power is the freeze order. Ayan, may frozen tayo dyan. Ano ba yung sabihin nito? And when? Yun nga, I think meron na akong na-mention ka kahapon na kapag sinabi mong freeze order, you cannot withdraw or you cannot use that account for a specific period. Kasi nga, may freeze order na in-issue. Ito again, verified ex parte petition by the AMLC. And dapat may determination ulit ng probable cause na related siya sa unlawful activity. And again, ang mag issue ay Court of Appeals. Pero ang effectivity lang ay for a period of 20 days. Okay. Within the 20 days na yan, kailangan mag-conduct ang Court of Appeals ng summary hearing with notice na notice na sa kabilang party na na-freeze yung account nila. Okay? And then, within that period, within the 20 days, di ba itong 20 days? Itong 20 days, papatawag ngayon ng Court of Appeals yung mga parties and then mag-hearing then determining ng Court of Appeals kailangan na ba nating i-lift yung freeze order kasi wala namang, wala naman talagang uh, probable cause to believe na related sa unlawful activity yung account na to or pwede ba nating extend. Kapag nag-decide i-extend ang Court of Appeals, ang freeze order, pwede lang siya up to 6 months. Mm -hmm. 6 months. Okay na Six months. And sa six months na yan, included na ang 20 days. Okay? So hindi pwedeng lumagpas ng six months. Okay? Sa so six months, pasok na dyan yung 20 days. So hindi dyan pwedeng lumagpas. Okay? Pero pag within the six months na yan, hindi pa rin nakapag-file ng kaso yung AMLC, automatically lifted na yan na freeze order na yan. Okay? Unless meron ng pending case 
sa korte. Alright? Sa anti-terror law, di ba? I think na-mention ko na yun kahapon. Meron rin yan na freeze order kapag dinesignate ka or na-proscribe ka as terrorist or related yung account mo sa terrorism financing. Okay? So, yan ang effect ng freeze order. Alright? So, hindi mo ma-withdraw yung account mo. Hindi mo siya magagamit. Okay. Ang saklap kung yun lang talaga yung bank account mo, di ba? Tapos na paghinalaan kang involved sa money laundering or terrorism or terrorism financing. Wala kang kapera-pera or wala ka ng ibang account. Okay? Sige. Another power of the Anti-Money Laundering Council is they can forfeit assets. Ibig right? sabihin na forfeit. Pwede na lang kunin yung asset na, na, yung asset na yon for the benefit of the government. Okay. So ay, ang, ang Anti-Money Laundering Council daw, pwede sila mismo mag-institute ng civil forfeiture proceedings through the Office of the Solicitor General. Okay. When? Kapag merong covered transaction or suspicious transaction report that was made and the court has in a petition filed for the purpose, order the seizure of any monetary instrument or property in whole or in part directly or indirectly related to said report. So dalawa no, kailangan may covered transaction or suspicious transaction and kailangan nakapag-issue na rin yung court ng order for the seizure. Hindi pwedeng sinabi ng EMS, oh, forfeit na yan. Hindi pwede. Dapat may, may, may order pa rin ng court. Okay. So paano naman, syempre, baka matatalino yung mga money launderers, tinago na yung pera or property hindi na mahanap. Pero, nahanap siya. Like, nakulong siya, nakonvict, naparusahan. In case hindi na matrace yung pera yon hindi na malukit, pwede, nang, pwede na lang pagba, pagbayarin yung tao that was convicted by the unlawful activity or money laundering. So, pwedeng ma-prosecute kasi sa dalawang magkaiba yan. Eh. Pwedeng liable ka for kidnapping for ransom, tapos ipoprosecute ka pa for money laundering. Okay, so dalawa yan. So, in case may conviction na, na talagang involved ka sa money laundering, tapos hindi mo na, hindi na mahanap ng, ng korte, hindi na rin mahanap ng law enforcement agency, saan mo ba nilagay yung perang yon? Pwedeng ilagay na lang, i-order na lang ng korte o bayad ka na lang kasi hindi mo, hindi na namin matrace kung saan mo nilagay yung monetary instrument or property. Okay? No, paano naman, kung halimbawa, di ba, um, qualified theft, tapos nahuni, nahuli yung nagnakaw, and then na prosecutions for money laundering, and then ikaw to na talagang true owner of that money or that property. Tapos if you forfeit yung, yung property mo or yung money mo. Siyempre, ayaw mo naman mangyari yun kasi gusto mo mabalik sa'yo. So, ikaw, as the claimant, you will file a verified petition. Sasabihin mo that the money or property legitimately belongs to you and pray that that monetary instrument or property be segregated or excluded. Okay. So, saan may file Doon rin sa court na nag-render ng conviction or nag-order ng forfeiture. So, di ba, at bawa sa nag-file sa regional trial court, nag-order ng conviction doon sa tao and then in order rin na forfeit yung assets, magpa-file ka ngayon within 15 days from the order of that forfeiture. Sabihin mo, ah, I am the true owner, I am the legitimate owner and please segregate this property because I want it back. So, yun ang gagawin mo as the true owner of that property. Alright? Okay. So, yun ang mga powers ng AMLC before the amendment. So, ito na. Ito na ang may init na balita na update sa AMLA. Okay. So, ayan. Fresh na fresh pa within the week. So, itong RA11521. Ito yung amendment sa AMLA. And it was signed into law nung ano lang. Anong araw na bang yun? Sunday. Ito, signed lang siya nung Friday, January 29. And ito, parang ano kasi siya, buzzer beater. This was introduced as an amendment to AMLA because we don't want to be included 
on the gray list or countries with, with, with policies against dirty money by the Financial Action Task Force. So, sino ba tong Financial Action Task Force? Ito ano to? Based sila sa Paris. And this is the Global Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing Watchdog. This intergovernmental body sets international standards that aim to prevent these legal activities and the harm they cause to society. So as a policy-making body, the FATF works to generate the necessary political will to bring about national legislative and regulatory reforms in these areas. So kapag hindi mo nagawa yun, you will be included dito nga sa tinatawag na gray list. So ano naman kung masama ka dyan sa gray list? Weird no, hindi blacklist, gray lang. Okay. So ang pag-included ka daw sa gray list, ang ibig sabihin niyan, higher interest rates and processing fees as well as more layers of scrutiny from financial institutions. Okay? And saan ba ito relevant? Siyempre kasi kung mangungutang na naman ang Pilipinas, may hirapan tayo mag-process niyan. And hindi tayo magkakaroon ng A na credit rating. So wala na magpapautang sa atin pag ganyan. So pag included tayo sa gray list. And ang AFT, AFTF, binigyan ng Pilipinas ng deadline na February 1 para ma-implement yung changes to AMLA. So pasok sa banga, buzzer beater na approved noong January 29, 2021. So hindi na tayo ma-include sa gray list. So yun ang rason kung bakit meron tayong AMLA. Actually, nung 2001, 2000, la-include na tayo sa gray list. Kaya nagkaroon the next year nitong AMLA. Kasi before, wala tayong AMLA. And kaya include tayo sa gray list. So, 2001, kaya in-approve yung original na AMLA. Yung 9162. So, ito na naman. Para hindi na nga tayo masama doon. So, kaya binadali rin ang Kongreso. And napirmahan agad. Okay. So, hindi ko actually alam kung pasok pa to sa CPA board ng October. Pero I think, yeah, baka mamaya i-consider na kasi ano pa naman, January 2021 pa naman siya naging applicable. So, ayun. So, for board takers this year, take note. Okay. So, ito ang salient amendments sa AMLA. Okay. So, unang-una sa listahan, kasama na ang mga Pogo. Sana familiar kayo dyan sa mga Pogo. Ang dami niyan sa Makati. Yung parang internet-based na uh, gaming, ganyan, and sports events. Ganyan. Basta yan yung Pogo. Kaya nagkaroon rin ng influx ng mga Chinese dito sa atin because of this. So, ang threshold amount rin nila in excess. Nanda, in excess of 500,000 of all POGOs. Okay? Aside from POGOs, sinama na rin ang real estate brokers and developers as covered persons. But only for single cash transactions involving amount in excess of 7.5 million. Okay? So 7.5 million lang pesos. So dun sa covered persons, tatlong amounts na yung tatandaan nyo, 500,000 in excess, huwag yung kakalimutan na, in excess of 500,000 for POGOs and other covered persons, for casinos, in excess of 5 million, kapag real estate brokers naman, single cash transactions, in excess of 7.5. So 500k, 5 million, 7.5 million. So medyo ano to no. Medyo ni narrow pero samahan ng mga properties dito sa Metro Manila, madaming papasok diyan 7.5 million. So yun yung mga included sa covered person na dagdagan. Ano pa daw yung amendment? So bago pang amendment, sinama na rin ang mga tax crimes. Ano ba tax crimes? Ito yung tax evasion under your tax code with a threshold in excess of 25 million. So ito lang yung I think natatanging unlawful activity na merong threshold amount. Okay? And violation ng Trade Management Act on the financing of the 
proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Okay. So, exclude nyo. Hindi ko masyadong na-edit. Ayan. So, ito mga include as a predicate offense. Anong predicate offense? Yan rin yung unlawful activity. Other term, predicate offense. Okay. So, sinama to tax crimes or tax evasion in excess of 25 million. And then, violation of Trade Management Act on the financing of the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Okay. So, dalawa ang in-include sa covered persons. Dalawa rin ang in-include sa unlawful activities or predicate offenses. Ano pa ba? Yeah. Aside from that, binigyan rin ng more powers ang AMLC. So, andyan na rin yung authority to require, receive, and analyze covered or suspicious transactions reports from covered persons. Okay? And binigyan na rin sila ng sabina power. And ito, feeling ko, may magko-question ito with the Supreme Court. Conduct search and seizures of suspicious accounts. So medyo ano to, medyo, medyo delikado and I don't think this will pass uh, judicial scrutiny. Kasi if you read your Bill of Rights under Article 3, Section 2, nasasabi dyan na ang searches and seizures, magiging reasonable lang siya if there is a search warrant issued by the judge. Okay, judge lang ang authorized mag-issue ng search warrants and mag-authorize ng search and seizures. So, ayan. So, antayin natin ang future developments kasi fresh na fresh pa naman to. And let's see if ma-question nga siya sa Supreme Court or any competent court for that matter. Okay. So, ayan. And then, pwede na rin nilang i-preserve, manage, or dispose yung assets pursuant to a freeze order. Preservation order or judgment of forfeiture. So pwede na nilang i-dispose daw yung assets, i-manage and preserve. Okay. And pwede na rin silang mag-implement ng targeted financial sanctions in relation to proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and their financing. Ayan. So may apat na bagong powers ang anti-money laundering council. Okay. And aside from that, Nag-adapt na rin ng Information Security and Confidentiality Proposals, ang bagong amendment, in order to safeguard the information process by the Anti-Money Laundering Council and deterring the council staff from leaking or misusing information. Kasi di ba, they are receiving a lot of reports and confidential information. So kailangan naman talaga that this information are properly secured and safeguarded. Okay. All right, so yeah, that's it for your AMLA. Thank you so much. And if you have questions, I don't know if you have or after. Now you have a question. And that was indeed a very comprehensive discussion with regards to anti-money laundering act and of course this this discussion is very very useful and helpful especially to us third year students because this is under our rfpt topics right now we are currently actually discussing this so right now ladies and gentlemen we had a lot of questions and if you still have certain questions you may follow them up in our fb live you can just comment down your questions and an educational and research standing committee will be able to reach out to you and forward your questions to attorney Azorius right here. But can you now we have received certain questions for attorney from our um, JPNs out there. So the first question that you will ask for is, um, can the knowledge in auditing be sufficient enough to identify acts of laundering? Hmm. I don't think naman that it's necessary na you apply the knowledge in auditing kasi nga the law itself uh, sets uh, parameters para ma-determine kung alin yung kailangan i-report. And yung sa covered transaction na required lang na amount. And for suspicious transaction, 
meron na in-enumerated. Although meron sa last part na ba na similar or analogous. So you, as an auditor also, you you have to be very careful. Or in case you are employed in a bank, you have to be very careful for transactions na below naman 500k, pero feeling mo suspicious. Ayan. So tingnan mo yung previous transactions ng client, ganyan. But if you feel na kailangan talagang i-report, then so be it. Kasi meron nga tayong tinatawag na safe harbor provision. Now, well, hindi ka naman pwedeng parasan just because you reported a suspicious transaction. Thank you so much po, attorney. Um, we also have another question from Anonymous. Um, how did the pandemic affect the implementation of AMRA po? Hmm. As to the implementation ng AMLA, syempre wala na tayong mga face-to-face -face na transactions and siguro yung pag-transfer ng pera, pag-wire ng pera because of that limitation in physical interaction, siguro mostly perform na siya online or digitally. So I don't know if there are already safeguards in place or meron na uh, department ang Anti-Money Laundering Council for that na talagang monitor nila yung digital transactions. Pero kung ganyan, syempre mas mahirap i-trace, di ba? Kasi ang bilis i-transfer ng pera mag-online banking ka lang or online transfer or kung saan mo ilagay, then yun yung mahirap rin i-monitor. So, I think yun rin yung isang effect nun kasi there was an unprecedented increase rin with uh, digital financial transactions. So, yun yung rin yung challenge sa Anti-Money Laundering Council to adapt to these developments in order for them to, to have a better uh, performance with regards to their functions to monitor money laundering offenses. Thank you po, Atini. Um, bagong pasok po na question from our FB Live from Mr. Samuel Iwag. Di ba pag sa casino po, parang laundered din yung pera? Mahihirapan kaya ang AMLC para malaman kung illegal or legal yung pera ang ginagamit nila. Nalilito po kasi ako sa casino. <laughs> Pero tayo nalilito sa casino kasi hindi ko alam kung asa na casino. May joke lang. For casinos naman, uh, although wala akong first hand information kung magkano talaga nga yung average na amount na usually involved sa isang laro or sa isang game, Pero our lawmakers deem it proper na at least 5 million. So, I know, in excess of 5 million. So, kung 5 million, more than 5 million yung involved na transaction, i-report na agad ng casino. And although nga, below dyan, nasa casino operators na rin para ma-determine kung kaduda-duda, kung papasok ba siya sa suspicious transaction. Okay. And siguro kung walang proper identity yung nagdi-deal ng pera o nagkahawak ng pera, pwedeng pumasok as suspicious transaction, ganon. Or um, biglang nag-transact nag with a certain kind of amount na usually hindi niya naman ginagawa, then pwedeng mag maging suspicious transaction. Ayan. So before kasi, before the controversy with RCBC, talagang hindi pinansin with regards to money laundering. Yun yung loophole na nakita nung mga nag-commit nung heist na to sa Bangladesh. Kaya pinasok nila sa casino kasi alam talaga nilang pera ang involved dito. So ayan, kaya kinover. Unfortunately, yun lang yung nakalagay eh. Yun lang yung nilagay sa batas na 5 million niya. Ganyan. So possible, sig pa rin. Siguro na below that amount or hindi man notice kung for example, isolated transaction lang pero ano pala galing sa unlawful activity yung pera. So, ayan. And I think for this law to work talaga para ma-prevent yung money laundering, dapat talaga very faithful rin yung mga covered persons with their responsibility to identify customers, to report covered or suspicious transactions, ayan, maintain records properly, and really adhere to what the law wants, that is to prevent money, money laundering offenses. Thank you so much, attorney, for that follow-up quest. For that 
clarification. Ay, po segue lang muna tayo. Attorney kasi natatawa ako sa mga comments. Ang dami-dami pong nag-admire uh-huh. sa iyo. Sabi po na isang commenter from our FB live na hulog na daw po ata siya sa inyo. Ay, wow. <laughs> so, you want to go ano, harap. <laughs> so, let's move on po. Another question from our FB live po. Madami-dami pong katanungan sa inyo. Um from Miss Giselle to Billyo. Kung halimbawa po na lift na ang pag-freeze ng accounts dahil di nakapag-raise ng case, pwede kaya ma-freeze ulit ang accounts pag may na-raise na na case? Um, ang gagawin siguro niyan, kasi ang basis ng pag-freeze is probable cause. Um, meaning, you have uh, sufficient facts or circumstances that will lead to conclusion na meron niyang money laundering. So in case insufficient ang evidence the first time, the AMLC can always gather more evidence and then try to file a case again. Although hindi necessary na may kaso ha, na para magkaroon ng freeze order. Pwedeng wala muna. Pero yun nga, limited sa 20 days na pwede extend to 6 months. Uh, pwede nilang i-freeze ulit once they have more evidence. Yeah. And then, pwede extend to 6 months ulit. Especially kung may kaso na. Thank you, thank you so much, Botin. Ito naman po, medyo related sa mga pa-Netflix na mga mm-hmm. money heist. Um, the question is, what was the smartest scam that has ever happened in the bank- banking industry and what corresponding actions were done daw po to solve it? <laughs> may plano ata sila. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> sa Philippines, I think ito talaga. Itong sa scandal ng RCBC at saka yung Bangladesh bank heist. And... Ang response naman siyempre dito, i-prosecute agad yung mga bank officials, kinasuhan naman agad, and inamit agad yung AMLA, ayan, para mag-comply tayo with international standards. Yun yung ginawa. Pero, ma- maano lang ako, no? ma-deviate lang ako dun sa banking. I don't know if you are aware, yung sa US ngayon, meron na issue about a certain stock. Hindi siya related sa bank. Yung sa GameStop, and yung GameStop na stock, na ang involved dito ay yung mga hedge fund na sobrang lalaki, billions of pesos lang, versus mga small-time traders. So ang ginawa nila, parang meron atang article, I, I don't know, correct me if I'm right, kung meron kayong alam. Parang merong article na yung stock ng GameStop, is short sell niya. Ibig sabihin yon manghihiram siya ng stock na yon GameStop na yan. Tapos gusto niya bumaba yung bumaba yung price ng GameStop para makabili siya at a lower price then eventually pwede niya nang mabenta at a higher price. So itong stock ng GameStop parang nainis itong mga small time traders kasi isa to sa mga tinitrade nila. So nainis sila kasi kikita lang yung mga hedge fund managers kung bumaba yung price. So ang ginawa nila pinaakyat nila ng pinaakyat ng pinaakyat yung Money. So, nalugi siyempre yung hedge fund. Eh, and ang involved dyan ay billions of pesos. Ayan. So, ang nangyari ngayon, sobrang taas na nung price nung GameStop na stock na yun. Kasi nga, pinataas ng pinataas kasi parang hinaip nila ng hinaip. So, madami yung bumili. Pero mga small time lang to ha, versus hedge funds. So, ang gusto ko lang ma-point out dito, even though sa banking industry or sa stock market, lagi talagang may loophole na makikita. So, evolving rin ang ating financial system. And especially ngayon with the proliferation of digital transactions. So, I think kailangan rin mag-adapt ng, ano natin, ng bansa natin at ng lawmakers natin. Kailangan na talaga nilang tuunan pansin yung mga ganito. And kahit nga yung mga pag-order halimbawa, sa food panda, sa Grab, kailangan na meron na law na tututok dyan. Ganyan. Or sa GCash or sa mga cryptocurrency, ganyan. So, continuous ang, in, ang involvement ng ating batas, ng ating financial system. And even with US na advanced na compared sa atin, meron at meron pa rin mangyayari na mga ganyan na mga skandal na hindi nakikita o napoforsee ng mga lawmakers. Ayan. So, balik sa question mo, in that case, ang pinaka-aware akong talaga pinakamalaki is itong RCBC kasi nga 81 million dollars. So, pag multiply mo yan sa 50, sabarang laking pera. Thank you so much, Potterny. Actually, I have read din po about oh, that yeah, stock that market because it has been trending for a lot mm-hmm. of time. And yes, it, yes. your article po actually, attorney, it originated in a Reddit post. Um, mm-hmm. Reddit is like a Twitter, but it's most wholesome. Then dun po yung sa start. So it is very amazing how people, pag nag-combine yung mga yeah. little powers <laughs> ng people, they can create like 
more so like a revolution. Yeah. Imagine na po bagsak nila yung GameStop. Oh. Okay, so thank you po attorney for that. Um ito na po follow up question po with regards to the freeze order. Um halimbawa daw po na lift na after ng 6 months ang freeze order tapos hindi pa po nakagather ng evidences ang AL- AMLC to file a case, possible po ba na makalusot yung incident na yun, given na yung incident ay guilty naman sa money laundering? Ano incident? Sorry. Wait. I, I'll read po again the question. Halimbawa daw po, na lift after ang six months, ang freeze order, tapos hindi pa po nakagather ng evidences ang AMLC to file a case. Possible po ba na makalusot the incident na yun. I think the incident that she's referring to is to the Mo- Lo- Money Laundering Act. Tapos daw, given naman na yung incident is guilty daw po talaga for money laundering. Ay, you mean like makalusot yung pera? Mm-mm. Okay, yeah, very crucial rin syempre sa Anti-Money Laundering Council na within that 20 days. Kasi within 20 days, ano yan eh? Yung tatawag natin na ex-party. Yung sinabi ko nga na hindi kailangan ipatawag yung other party. And Automatic yan. 20 days agad binibigyan ang AMLC ng, ng freeze order. So dapat within that 20 days, ma-make sure na lang nila na pag pinatawag ng court, eh, merong sufficient evidence. Kasi yun talaga yung sinasabi ng batas, eh, maximum lang 6 months, including the 20 days. So after that, kung talagang convince ang korte na wala naman talagang money laundering or wala naman talagang unlawful activity, then ililift yung freeze order. But if eventually, nakapag-file ng case ang uh, Anti-Money Laundering Council, even without a freeze order, nakapag-file ng kaso for money laundering, pwede rin namang eventually forfeit yung assets, di ba? Na-discuss natin may asset forfeiture. Pwede rin yun eventually. So in case, alamabawa, nailusot niya, na naitago niya, pwede pa rin yung option na pabayarin na lang siya, gawin, niyang, gawin personal liability nung nagtago ng pera. Thank you po, attorney. Another question po from Mr. Ryan Banyes. Um, speaking of loophole daw po, hindi po ba masyadong naive ang mga lawmakers noon para hindi include ang casino noon sa AMLA? <laughs> Grabe sa naive. <laughs> Strong word. <laughs> Ah, hindi, I will not use siguro naive, siguro complacent lang nung time na yun. And they considered more the convenience of the casino operator, siguro, kasi syempre, malaking pera yan and uh, gusto rin nila protect that siguro yung industry at that time. And yeah, ayun, we, can, we cannot know the real intention kung bakit nila in-exclude nung time na yun, pero it backfired, <laughs> kaya... Nalusutan tayo and matatalino yung mga nag-wire ng pera galing sa Bangladesh. I will not say naive. Siguro ano lang. Complacent. <laughs> Sige, thank you po. Masagway lang po tayo. Medyo madami tayo questions about um, lalong lalo na madami po siyang revisions right now. Oh, Ito ma- po, segue lang from <laughs> Miss Diane Aralar. Ito po, medyo personal question. Um, if you don't mind daw po, attorney, ilang taon na po kayo at habang nag-retake po ba kayo ng law, I mean, habang nag-retake po kayo rather ng law, nag-revert po ba daw kayo? Nag-ano? Nagtatrabaho daw po ba kayo? Ah, kala ko nag-revert. Nag-revert. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nag-work. Ah, oo. 26 na ako and yes, I was a working student while taking up law. So, pagkapas ako ng CPA board, nagtrabaho muna ako for two years and then Yon. Work, I nag-aral ulit ng law school. Kasi after ng CPA board, feeling ko mafe-feel nyo rin. Or unless sobrang sipag nyo mag-aral. Tapos, gusto nyo mag-further studies, master or even law. Tatama rin rin kayong magdere-diretsyo. Parang gusto nyo muna maging working professional. And then kapag ano na, na-feel nyo na, ah, ganito pala mag-work. And then gusto nyo na ulit mag-aral. Pwede naman niya magpahinga muna ng one year, ganyan, or two years in my case. Then, aral ulit kayo. Pero kung sobrang sipag niya talaga mag-aral, and may nahabol kayong timeline, like, pagkapas ako ng CPA board, mga 20 years old, aral ako ng law, so lawyer ako ng 25, 26, papakasal na ako. So, yan, di ba? So, may ganyan kayong timeline na sinusunod, pwede naman. Kung talaga, 26 dapat, ano, like 25 magka-jowa, 26 mag-asawa, 27 baby. Yan. So, planado, planado nyo na yung life nyo. Pero yan, yung diretsyo. Pero in my case, kasi hindi naman ako nagmamadali. So, so ayun. Ayun po. I think I speak po for all the FB Live participants here na si Attorney Azores yung epitome ng 
Lodi, ng idol. So, <laughs> let's move on naman po to another question. Ito medyo related sa current and social issues in our country. Um, is the recent PhilHealth 15 billion issue can be covered daw po by the AMRA? Yeah. Alam mo, may nag-invite sa akin niya na school. And siguro wala pa talaga silang money laundering. Parang initial perception nila, pag sinabing money laundering, involved yung corruption, lahat ganyan. So ang inisip nila, pag corruption siguro, money laundering to. So yun, at least na-correct na yung misconception nyo na gano'n, na iba ang money laundering dun sa unlawful activity. Predicate lang to, predicate offense lang, iba pa ang money laundering. So ganyan, syempre, hindi na natin matrace, di ba? hindi na natin mahana. So for sure, nilagay na yan somewhere. So that way, that is where money laundering comes in. Kasi syempre, yung mga nagnaka kung, tal- kung totoo talagang minaka pero syempre may mga may mga whistleblowers na nga and may records na nagsasabi na may nawawala talagang billions of pesos for sure hindi naman nila yan ilalagay lang sa bank account kasi syempre i-report yan ng mga ng mga banko na oh ito may pumasok ng 15 billion kay ano ganito ganyan syempre trace na agad hindi naman sila ganoon ka ano, ka, ka, ano rin uh, hindi nag-iisip <laughs> na, na syempre maalalaman agad ba, ano agad and pag pinrosecute sila syempre pwedeng ipawave sila ng bank secrecy lang. so ayun so I think with that huge amount of money imposible talagang hindi nilagay or hindi nilonder para magmukhang legitimate ka. baka nilagay na sa real estate kaya may kaya in-endeavor rin yung kita ng real estate pwede kasing binili na ng mga real estate Pwede yung pinangalan sa ibang tao. So possible na magkaroon ng money laundering. Let's wait for future developments. Sana nga may makasuhan na or magkaroon ng investigation pa. Lalo para malaman na kung asan ba yung pera niya. Thank you, thank you so much, attorney. And of course naman po talaga yung mga taong involved sa mga gaitong bagay, talaga hindi naman natin maide-deny na mautak din sila. True. Kasi sobrang laking money nito din. Oo. Oh, oh. Siguro kung magtatrabaho ka ng 30 years, hindi mo matatanggap yung gaitong ugin. Really? So, That's another it. question din po, attorney, from Mr. Joshua Villanueva. Um, hello, attorney D. Can I ask po if did you know the case of Calvo versus UCPB, General Insurance Corporate, Corporated, uh, Corporation, Incorporation rather, about the AMLA? Thank you po and God bless. Oh my gosh, pinag-recite ako ng case. Hindi ako parang magaling sa akin yan. Aha! Sige. Tingnan nga natin. Wait lang, baka ma-ano ko. Baka ma-remember ko kung ano yung... Ano, pinaparecite niya ako nung case na yun. May question ba? Wala naman. Parang ano na daw po. If, alam niyo daw po ba yung case about Calvo? Siguro na. Siguro na-encounter ko na. Pero you have to <laughs> remind me. You have to jog my memory about that. Siguro nadaanan ko na. Kasi syempre case naman yan. Kung case talaga yan about money laundering, and medyo ano eh, medyo limited rin ang jurisprudence natin about that. Pero kung may tanong ka about that jurisprudence, and you can give me a brief background, para lang maalala ko, hindi naman ako tulad. May, meron, kasing, meron kasing lecture na talaga memorize niya lahat ng, ng case titles, pero ako naman, hindi ako masyadong like minimemorize lahat. Mas more ako on the the decision, yung important decision, and memorize ko lang yung mga case title kung very, ano talaga, very landmark, kung landmark decision and very important cases. So, yeah. Kung sa nagtanong, can you give me some answer info? <laughs> Para naman masagot ko kung tanong mo. Or gusto mo lang malaman kung alam ko. Um, so, maybe. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Siguro yung sagot ko. Maybe. Kung gusto mo alam ko, lang malaman. <laughs> Sige po. Ito, a question for me. Kaya mo pa ba? Padaming pumapasok na question po talaga. So, kaya pa ba, attorney? Lalaban nyo ba tayo from the JPS? Ay, depende sa time nyo. Depende sa time. Ah, yes, attorney. We still have time po. Okay. So, another question naman po. Um, this question is, what will happen though po to the money that is caught from the money launder the money launderer, saan daw po ito mapupunta? Kasi may mga cases, di ba po, na pag may evidence for something, nagiging stagnant po, na iiwan lang in one place. So is it also the same with money? Um, di ba yun nga, sa Pinterest ko, nagkaroon ng bagong power ang AMLC. So, in case freeze order pa lang siya, 
pwede na nilang i-preserve or pwede nilang i-dispose yung assets. So in that case naman, yung mga na-forfeit na monetary instrument, napupunta yan sa general treasury. Napupunta sa gobyerno. Sa gobyerno na yung pera. Yan. So kung ganun, unless nga, meron talagang nag-appear na legitimate owner, then pwede ibalik sa kanya ng court. Pero kung talagang wala, as in galing talaga sa maduming pera, and wala namang victim, then mapupunta yun sa general treasury. Okay, nag- si ano po, si Joshua Villanueva kanina yung nagtanong about the case. Oh. Nag-sorry po. Sabi niya, sorry daw po, attorney Gil. <laughs> ah, ito. <laughs> ito, another question na naman po, attorney. This is related to forensic accounting. Itong tanong niya is, napapractice na ba dito sa Pilipinas ang forensic accounting? And if yes, is there a possibility that this forensic accounting can be a part of AMLA to solve financial crimes in the Philippines, especially sa banko? I think, yeah. Kung ano, maging CPAs na kayo, pwede kayo mag-apply sa NBI. Nag- nagre-recruit ang NBI ng lawyers sa CPAs. Actually, yun ang gusto nilang hanapin. Kasi nga, kailangan nilang expertise for that. Mga forensic accounting. Kahit sa COA, meron na forensic auditing. Ganyan. So, ano na siya? Practice na siya. And very important rin siya yung especially sa mga ganyan na mga crimes na nililayer layer lang para naman pag mukhang malinis yung pera. So usually ganyan ang involved, eh, nililayer layer lang para hindi na matrace kung saan o oh, create ng corporation tapos gagawin ng procedure ganyan. Hanggang hindi na matrace kung saan ganyan yung pera. Ganun. So yes, I think na ma-practice na although wala akong personal ano, personal na experience with that. Pero I've heard na sa NBI na yeah, nag kaya priority na lang yung mga CPAs rin, yung mga lawyers for that team, for that purpose. And thank you po, attorney. Before we proceed to our general questions, kasi madami ding nagtatanong about you, attorney. So let's move on to the last question regarding to AMLA. Um, ito po yung tanong niya is, may madali ang paraan daw po ba talaga to determine if a certain transaction is fraudulent? May madali? Oh. Wala, hindi naman like... Pag ni-report na sa AMLC, nabawa, uh, nag-deviate talaga sa usual transaction ng client, talagang malayo and hindi commensurate sa financial capacity niya, kahit naman ni-report niya sa AMLC, hindi naman basta-basta sasabihin ng AMLC, oh, money laundering yan. Kailangan pa rin nila siyempre i-verify. And i-determine kung talaga merong probable cause. Kasi unfair yan. And kailangan mo rin bigyan siyempre ng due process yung, yung account holder. Kailangan mo i-determine kung meron mo. Baka naman kasi nanalo sa loto or alam mo yon may nag-donate sa kanya. Di ba? Hindi pwedeng agad-agad. Siyempre, siyempre di ba? Kung ikaw naman yung tao, alimbawa, yung mga man ka bigla or nagkaroon ka talaga ng pera, ayaw mo naman siyempre kasuhan ka agad ng money laundering without asking you or without uh, investigating further. So, ayun. Mas okay na ang um, sigurado kaysa yung madalian kahit sa ang bagay. Pag-sealed man or otherwise. Yes, of course naman. We have to be careful naman talaga guys. Hindi yeah. naman tayo basta-bastang magpapadala or maniniwal. Kasabi nga ni attorney kanina, di ba? You have to verify. And sa mga yeah. nag-comment kanina na naghahanap okay. sila ng jowa, i-verify niyo muna guys. Baka yung kachat niyo dyan ay may jowa na pala at nakakasabi really? talaga. <laughs> Ayan, attorney, ito na. Madaming JPNs ang naghihintay for this. Super dami nilang sinend out na general questions. So, ito na po, attorney. Um, I wait, my last follow-up question po tayo regarding AMLA. Ano daw po ang mga necessary steps in submitting resor- reports to the AL- AMLC? Um... Yun nga, within five working days from the occurrence, kailangan mo i-report doon. So, i- ano mo lang yung transaction involved, kung sino yung account holder, yung amount, ganyan, and other necessary details, other specifics na pwedeng i-require ng AMLC. Very important rin doon, syempre, yung time, yung time period. Kasi kaya may limit na five working days kasi baka mamaya galawin na yung pera or kung ano pang involved. Hindi alam ng anti-money laundering box. Hindi sila makaka- makaka-action rin na kailangan gawin para ma-prevent yung any further actions ng mga money launderers in case they are in. Okay, thank you po, attorney. Ito na po talaga. Final na final na. Questions on to general, like general questions on the accountancy and lawyer life. Um, ano po ba ang buhay lawyer attorney? 
madali na po ba ang everything after nagiging lawyer ka na? After maging lawyer? No. <laughs> mas, ma- mas, ano, mas mahirap. Mas busy. And mas pagod. Hindi naman yun. Kahit naman, kahit naman sa ang profession na hindi porket pagkapasan nyo, okay na ako. Ganyan. Siyempre, dyan na darating yung kailangan nyo na magtrabaho. Kailangan nyo pang mag-grow sa career nyo. And continuous and never ending learning. Hindi porket you are already professional, you stop learning, you stop improving yourself. Ayan. So, actually, mas mahirap. Mas <laughs> mahirap maging lawyer. May nakita nga akong meme na I can relate na parang pag student ka, oh, gusto ko maging CPA, ganyan. Or pag lawyer ka, gusto ko na maging lawyer, ganyan. Tapos yung mga lawyer, gusto na lang nila ulit maging estudyante. <laughs> Kasi ang problema nyo lang at that time, syempre, yung ano lang, yung makapasa lang, ganyan. And makuha yung lisensya. Pero pag professional na kayo, you're already dealing with clients. Problema nila, problema mo na rin. Okay. And ang, ang trabaho naman ng mga CPA, trabaho ng lawyers, lalo na pag CPA lawyers ka, ikaw ang taga-shoulder ng problema ng iba. So ikaw ang may stress para sa kanila, pero babayaran ka na. <laughs> at least at least bayad yung stress. Oo, oh, oh. hindi pwede ma-stress ka. Unless yun, hindi <laughs> naman tayo mga ano. Mga, ano, pro bono, <laughs> ganyan. Yung mga talagang, ano, kailangan rin naman tulungan. Pero kung kaya naman magbayad, diba? at least bayad ang stress. Ang ngayon, since nag-aaral pa lang kayo, free ang stress. So, diba? Unlimited ang stress and unpaid. So, ang nagantay lang, pag CPA na kayo, bayad na ang stress. Ayan po, Ate. Ito a question from our FB live daw po. Um, does topping bar examinations or examination board examinations in general means successful practice of the profession or in this case for the stopping the bar exam means successful practice of law no i don't think it is hindi naman um siguro ano lang yun talaga indication that you ace the exam you know that that's it for me ako naman personally i aimed to place in the top 10 sa bar examinations kasi coming from a provincial school and that is not uh, relatively known. I wanted to prove na kaya ng provincial schools, na kaya ng isang provincial to to best other schools and other barristers that came from these schools. So yun lang yung purpose ko talaga. And hindi naman yan na assurance na, ah, okay, top not sure ka, ano ka, sure ka ng magaling. Hindi naman. Hindi naman, yan, hindi naman yan indication. And you still have to create a name for yourself even after in case you place about sa top 10 sa CPA board or sa bar exams. Ngayon kasi wala na top notch sa bar exams. So, ayun. Hindi naman siya indications. Pero, uh, ang maganda rin naman dyan kasi nga, um, more doors will open for you and you will already have um, more opportunities. Ganyan. And mas kilala ka, kahit pa paano. And you have this ability to inspire like yun. Yun rin yung, yun rin yung isa sa mga pinakatutuwa ako kasi at least kahit pa paano may inspire ako mga estudyante na feeling nila underdog sila, feeling nila hindi nila kaya makipag sa ibang schools or sa ibang estudyante kasi ganito lang ako, ganito ganyan. So ayun, yun rin yung isa sa mga magagandang bagay na may bibili. Pero definitely, hindi naman assurance na um, okay ka na agad-agad sa practice. And thank you so much, Attorney. Attorney, may nahalo po pala ang ano, question about AMLA. Balik tayo sa personal questions mamaya. Um, question about AMLA, AMLA po is, paano, ano po bang gagawin mo or how do you handle when your superiors are pressuring you to be part of a fraudulent act against the law in the sense of money laundering po? Ayan. So, syempre, as CPAs, meron tayong mga ano, di ba? Meron tayong code of responsibility. Meron tayong ethics na kaya tao. So, pag ganyan, um, like we discussed, yung mga manners of committing money laundering, di ba? If you aid or if you assist in the commission of money laundering, kasama ka sa liable. So, pag ganyan na against na sa principles mo, against na sa values mo, there's always the option to say no. Ganyan. But um, of course, uh, do it in a respectful manner and you it's always a test of your values and 
and your ability to stomach this kind of uh, this kind of request. Pero personally, if I were in that position, syempre, I will deny it. Kasi syempre, disensya at pagkatao ko yung nakataya dyan. And I would rather quit or I would rather uh, respectfully uh, resign from that position if necessary, oh, necessary talaga and hindi talaga kayang ma-avoid. So, ayun. And you are also exposing yourself to possible criminal and civil liabilities. So, mas mabuti ng safe ka kaysa ma-involve ka sa ganyan mga fraudulent transaction. Thank you, thank you so much, attorney. Um, we have now a question. This is related to the accountancy life before school. Ano po ang pinakamahirap na experience nyo yung college nyo habang nagtitake up kayo ng accountancy? Pinakamahirap? Parang everyday na ang mahirap sa ako. <laughs> <laughs> kasi ano, ako naman kasi ang accountancy ka talaga, hindi ko talaga siya choice, personally. Um, mm-hmm was forced to me forced uh, i was um it was the suggestion of my mother as a pre law course kasi nga daw related sa law and i was hesitant at first because there's this um stereotype thing na pag accountancy student ka you are good in math diba siguro na goyo rin kayo ganyan and personally i am not good in math and kailangan pa ng calculator kahit simple addition ganun hindi ako magaling talaga sa math and kahit CPAs, na makilala rin kung ganyan CPAs na parang i-calculator pa para sure. 2 plus 2, i-calculator pa para sure. Ganyan. So siguro yun yung pinakamahirap noong una because I was trying to survive a difficult course that I don't want at first. So mahirap talagang gawin ng isang bagay na hindi mo naman gusto. Diba? Lalo na kung mahirap pa itself. Siyempre, you have to fall in love with what you're doing and everything becomes easy. So, siguro yun yung pinaka-challenge sa akin. Yung, yung case, yung demands and requirements nung course. And then, eventually, nung na, na-accept ko na or na-appreciate ko na yung course, then doon na ako natuwa. Doon na ako nag-derecho. Doon na, doon ako sinipagan talaga. Kasi nung first year and second year, I I was uh, I was really not motivated to pursue accountancy anymore because my classmates are... Uh, you know, very competitive and the, the course is very demanding and very stressful talaga siya kasi meron niya na maintaining grade. So, pag hindi ka na ano, nakakaya, di ba? Parang may may honor ka nung high school, valedictorian ka na elementary, tapos babalitaan ng buong barangay mo, ah, natanggal ka sa ano, BU. <laughs> kasi parang may gano'n na stigma, parang pag natanggal ka sa ano, parang wala nang patutunguhan ng buhay mo. Parang gano'n. So, syempre, aside from the pressure of uh, understanding the subject, there's also the pressure of uh, surviving it, di ba? And getting good grades at that. So, siguro yun yung pinaka-challenge. And I think may mga ka-relate rin na um, tinake up lang yung course na to kasi practical or sinadjust ng kapamilya, ganyan. So, ito ito yung pinakamahirap na pagdadaanan nyo yung na try nyo i-survive yung pag-aaral na mahirap na nga and then you will find the good in the course to keep going, to keep, to continue moving forward despite that. And so thank you so much, Atani. Before we proceed to the very most frequent asked question po sa inyo, um, let's have a question from Ms. Kathleen Villegas from our FB Live again. Attorney, what are your thoughts about qualifying exams? Mm. Alin yung qualifying exams to enter the course? Or like qualifying exams for you? Um, I think in general, I think sa accountancy po, yung parang qualifying exams in terms ah, of accountancy. Exams. I will share my story, my personal story. So, ako naman, um, hindi ko nga personal choice yung accountancy, but I made it my first choice sa college and class examinations. I got the passing score, but I was qualified, but below quota. So, ibig sabihin nun, um, may cut-off kasi parang hanggang 150 students lang ang pwedeng kunin ng accountants course. So kahit pasado ka, bawa 85 ang passing score ng accountancy. Meron na 150 and more na mas mataas kayo, kaya qualified but below ko. So hindi ka pa rin makaka-enroll sa course kahit pasado. So ayun. So parang sabi ko sa nanay ko noon, oh, that's it, that's the sign na hindi ako dapat mag-accountancy. 
So, ayun. But, ito namang BU, itong Bicol University, meron silang tinatawag na crash course. So, para dun sa mga qualified but below quota. Binigyan nila ng um, parang course or like seminar about basic accounting. And then after that one day seminar, mag-exam ka. Yun. So, pagka-exam mo, pag nakapasa ka, pwede ka na mag -inform. So, luckily, I was one of the ten na pinili na pwede yung pumasok. So, ayun. So, parang, I'm sharing that story kasi, di ba, mga qualifying exams. There are a lot of factors that you need to consider. There are a lot of indicators that uh, that resulted to the results of your examinations. Pwede kasing nung time na nag -e exam ka, wala ka lang, or may problema kang dinadamdam, ganyan. Or wala ka lang sa best shape mo, ganyan. So, what I'm trying to point out is, these qualifying examinations will not define your future. Hindi ibig sabihin, bumagsak ka or pumasa ka, yun na, indication na yun that you will be successful later on in that course, you will be successful later on in life. Qualifying examination is just that. So, parang, it's just a measure if pwede ka ba dito sa course na to. But, in case na hindi ka makapas ka doon sa qualifying examinations, I upload those schools that give those who failed a second chance. Like what BU did to me. Kasi diba, kung hindi nila ako binigyan ng chance, then hindi ako nagpapag-account kasi hindi ako CPA na yun. So yun. So, um, I, I'm not against with qualifying examinations per se. Pero yung talagang pass or fail na parang pag hindi mo ito napasawala na, goodbye ka. Medyo ano ako doon, medyo, medyo hindi ako agree na parang, what if may talagang factors na may pinakonsider? Lalo na ngayon. Kasi online classes, hindi mo naman pwedeng ibagsak yung mga studyante kasi ang hirap nga na pinagdadaanan nila. Di ba? So, ayun. So, pwedeng ganon siguro ang gawin ng mga schools. Like, after the semester, kung hindi talaga may qualifying exams talaga na necessary, yung mga bumagsak, they can still give them a chance. Pwedeng tanongin nila ano bang problem hindi mo ba ako naintindihan yung ba na-discuss yung topic and then give them another chance para naman malaman baka naman kasi talaga may hindi lang siya naintindihan na portion or nagkaroon ng problema ganyan kasi madami akong classmates na binagsak sa school namin pero nung itong months per naging CPA ngayon nasa abroad na o diba so hindi talaga yan indication so kung in case naman na nasa school kayo na wala na talagang binibigay na pag-asa for those who fail the qualifying examinations then don't stop kung talagang panganap niya maging CPA, nilalagay ka lang ni Lord sa ibang lugar. But you will eventually go there. Parang ano ka na lang, dinidetour ka lang niya. Okay? So parang sa grab, di ba? May ibang way, pero mayroon na ibang way. Pero pareho ang destination. Ayan. So yun na lang siguro yung masasabi ko doon. Pag in case maranasan niyo yung gano'n. So never stop. Don't take it as a measure of whether papasa ba ako sa CPA. Kasi qualifying exams nga, di na ako pumasa yun pa kaya, well, no. Kasi magkaiba naman yun, magkaiba dito. And you always have the time to improve yourself and to prepare. Totoo. Thank you, thank you so much, attorney. Madaming napakomment sa atin na sa'yo daw lahat may second chance. Madami ding maiyak-iyak sa ating FB live comment po. Because I'm pretty sure na madami ding accountancy students ang um, iba't-iba yung experience with regards to qualifying exams and of course the journey itself. It matter me. There is an influx of these questions not only in our FB live but also in our Google Forms and of course in our JPNs mga puppy and din nila. Um, the question na attorney is, so I'll just speak for all generalize na natin yung katanungan dahil same thoughts na naman. Attorney, ano daw po ba talaga yung tips nyo? Masasabi nyo to be able to study accountancy and law. And of course, ano ang greatest advice na maibibigay nyo sa mga students right now who wants to be like you, who wants to become an attorney and a successful public accountant? For me naman, I, I think the key in being successful in anything you do is to fall in love with it. Or, kung hindi man kayo mo fall in love, then at least you have a very strong motivation to continue with what you're doing. Kasi in my case nga, di ba, I didn't fall in love initially with accountancy, but eventually I did. That's why I keep moving forward and I wanted to become excellent in what I do. So, if you have that, if you fall in love with the idea of becoming a CPA or even a CPA lawyer, then remember always that 
beautiful vision you have in mind. Kapag feeling mo di mo na kaya or pag gusto mo lang sumuko, remember again, bakit ba ako nangarap in the first place? Why did I want this in the first place? Okay. In love pa ba ako sa idea na maging CPA lawyer or gusto ko na lang siya kasi ito eh, nandito na ako. Ganun. So, yun naman I think ang pinaka-secret talaga dyan. Kahit anong study tip yung kunin nyo, pero kapag nag-aaral kayo, nai-care pa lang kayo kasi <laughs> hindi nyo naman talaga gusto or wala talaga kayong wala talaga kayong intention na maging CPA, then wala rin. Mag- magsasayang lang kayo ng oras. Diba? So fall in love with what you do and everything else will follow. Ayan, thank you, thank you so much. Attorney, ayan guys, I feel like natin fall in love, not with your classmate muna. Oo, but true. Fall in love. Or professor at that. <laughs> Pwede kasi yung mga ganyan. Oo. <laughs> But of course, fall in love with the dream, fall in love with the journey, and fall in love with the course. Thank you, thank you so much, attorney. And attorney, madami pa kasi mga katanungan from our, ano, may pa-plug ba tayo dyan na mga email or mga any way to reach out to you? Kasi baka may mga JPNs tayo na nahihiyang magtanong publicly. Oh. Pwede ka ba nilang ma-ask? Ah, oh, okay. Saturn ba tayo dyan? Okay. Um, Siyempre, first, uh, pag nag-enroll kayo sa Rayo, <laughs> I'm a lecturer then sa Rayo, so you can ask me directly, I think. I meron din na Facebook page doon, so pwede tayo mag-usap-usap doon. And sa Twitter, you can uh, interact with me sa Twitter, although medyo minsan nahihirapan ako magbasa ng direct messages. Pero minsan nag-check ako. Minsan nakaka-check ako ng direct messages, so kung may gusto kayong parating, ganyan, pwede kayong magtanong. And <laughs> pwede niya ako message doon. Sa Facebook, huwag na sa Facebook. Oh, yun sa Facebook kasi ano, syempre, alam mo naman ng Facebook. So, ayun, sa Twitter na lang, and then, um, Twitter na lang. Twitter na lang tayo. Doon na tayo interact and I think, madaming active doon na accountancy students. So, chika-chika tayo doon pag my time, then you can always message me then and I will try to respond. May mga nire-replyan naman ako. Yan. Pag ano, pag nababasa ko, inaladaanan ko. And, apologies rin sa iba na hindi ko nare-reply. Busy lang pala. Okay, now thank you, thank you so much, attorney, for discussing about AMLA and giving us so much of your knowledge and of course, mga tips. And game na game po kayong sumagot ng mga katanungan natin. Um, at this juncture, we will now be awarding the Certificate of Appreciation to our dear speaker. But, ano po, nagka-problema, there is a problem with the one who was supposed to be given this certificate. Kasi nagka-brown out po sa kanila. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, we understand technical difficulties and situations with regards to our um, events right now because of the limitations. So at this juncture, may we ask Mr. Rex Bangawan to be able to award this certificate of appreciation to Miss to attorney Azores. Sir Rex, nandun po ba kayo? Jane, I'll be the one to award. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, Irato po. Um, <laughs> ang mag-street po. <laughs> Ayan, napatawag tayo agad-agad. Na, nangutos pa tayo. Sorry po. Sorry, attorney. Sorry po, Sir Rex. Uh, magbibigay for the Certificate of Appreciation to be given by Address Standing Committee, Nicole Vince. Good afternoon, everyone. Allow me to read the citation. The Certificate of Appreciation is hereby awarded to Attorney May Diane Amazores, CPA, for imparting her knowledge, expertise, and valued time to the attendees of the webinar entitled Kinaadman, a lecture on banking laws, AMLA, taxation under the local government code via Zoom conference. Given this 31st day of January 2021, signed by yours truly, the co-project head, by Kyle Nance L. Delgado, the National Vice President for Academics, and by Peniel O. Robles, the National President, and lastly, by Sir Conrad Alan M. Alvis, CPA, CISA, CIA, CSRS, the National Advisor. Thank you, Attorney Azores. Thank you. Thank you, NFJP. I had a good time. Thank you. Thank you so much, po, Attorney. And at this juncture, since we understand that maybe there are other commitments or other events that you have to be at this time because of course naman si attorney in demand and my 
may gagawin po kaya si Adeline. So at this juncture, may we ask for a quick photo opportunity. So with this, may we ask the organizers and everyone in the team, including Sir Rex Bongawan, to turn on their cameras and show your beautiful and handsome faces for us to have a photo opportunity. Sino bang magte-take ng photo? Michi. Is anyone from the... Yeah. Ayan, okay. Si Jerbin from okay, Education will and Research. Po. One, two, three. Si Another one, okay. One, two, three. And okay na daw po. Thank you once again, attorney. And thank you, everyone who is watching in our FB Live and continuously watching in our FB Live right now. And guys, I know that we are all excited for our next topic, which will be about taxation and